All right, back to another video on the dually and uh, pretty much straight into getting this thing running. As of right now, it is, uh, what's today, like August 20th or something like that. I'll put the date on the screen. Um, and the plan is to drive this thing or haul the E36 with this thing uh, September 17th or something like that for No Star Bash. So we have less than a month to potentially get this thing done. And it needs a lot of small stuff, but a few big ticket items like tires, a shifter, not even sure how it drives yet, list of things. So yeah, straight into the video and uh, we'll start going over stuff. We got the oil pressure sensor wired up. So I was actually able to use the factory Dodge. I was able to use the factory Dodge oil pressure sensor. Now, I don't know that it reads correctly, but it does show oil pressure on the dash. So for now, I'm gonna leave it. Um, the GM oil pressure sensor screws right into the block. Um, I just wasn't sure. Technically, based off of my measurements, the pressure sensor wouldn't just screw right in. I'd have to use like a 45 and stuff. So instead of messing with it, I just tried to use the first in one since it is a one pin um, oil pressure sensor. I just don't know what the range on that is versus the dash. Um, but when I started the truck, it did show oil pressure. So we'll leave it as it is for now um, and see how that works out. Now, another thing that I haven't messed with that I finally um, dove into was getting coolant temp sensor reading on the dash. So this is your OE Dodge coolant temp sensor. It is a one spade style uh, connection for the temp sensor. The GM one is obviously like a different reading. OEM Dodge sensor is a three quarter inch MPT style thread. So I got a brass bushing. This is like a, for like gas pipe um, that goes to three quarter inch MPT and then also has a half inch center threaded section. So this is the GM temp sensor. As you can see, screws right in. I'll have to put some thread tape on this, but this will go right into the head on the Cummins and I should be able to just plug that right in and we should have coolant reading on the dash. Then we also got some H4 uh, headlight pigtails. As you can see, the OE Chevy ones, they're just kind of junk. The, the connection's not very sealed. You get water in them. These are super brittle, they break off. So I wanted to wire these in, which as you can see are sealed on the backside. They're, it's just a lot better quality. Another thing that we did discover was that the transfer tank setup that I made does work. Um, the connector that I put on at the pump just came loose. So when I went to test it with everything together, it wouldn't get power. Um, but I did test it the other day, um, fixed the connector and it does work. It transfers fuel and it does it very fluently. Doesn't build up pressure. Doesn't try to spit out of the cap or nothing. Um, like if I flip the tank or if I flip the power onto the pump, I can watch the fuel gauge start to climb pretty quick. It definitely takes a while. Um, my main concern right now is this pump sounds a little loud, but I did have a 20 volt battery hooked up to it. So that could be why that thing was probably fucking humming because it's not supposed to have that kind of voltage to it. All right. As you can see, got the headlights wired up. Uh, it's pretty simple. Just tied it into the factory harness. Delete a lot of the unnecessary jumpers. Um, ignore this. I just set. I just hand threaded a bolt in there. For now, until I get uh, my rev nut gun. Um, but yeah, headlights are wired. Check. 
coolant temp is installed and working. Obviously, there's no temp at the moment. Ignore the buzzing. Uh, so it has coolant temp, has battery voltage. Oil pressure does work. Fuel gauge works. The only gauge in this truck that does not work is the speedometer. So pretty stoked about that. So we got the uh, turn signal wired as well. It's not flashing because the circuit's not complete front to back, but headlights check, turn signal on this side check, and I just got to wire this one, but we got the wires going across here. We may add two more wires for parking lights up here in the grill. We also got this signal wired, so both side turn signals are working. All right, so we got everything back together. Everything is wired up. All right, so for the back taillight wiring, this is the new harness that I ran from the front of the truck. Um, Basically, all this wiring here is from these two trailer connectors. And then for the wiring, it looks like all we have to do is wire up this straight to this plug. And then I've got the whole taillight harness assembly sitting out already over here. So this should be pretty easy. I shouldn't have to mess with any of this if I do then we can address it, but it should be as easy as just wiring up to this plug um, and then putting this new trailer harness in. And this is exactly why you go through wiring. I just went through and peeled all the electrical tape off this and there's a bunch of old butt connectors and some that are just tied together with no connector. Um, yeah. Uh, those are soldered at least, but no zero sealant of any sort. All right, so we got the rear tail lights working. As you can see, signals are working, brake, brake lights are working. There's a couple of bulbs we got to replace because I just threw in what we had. In the meantime, while we were waiting to do that stuff, I knocked out the heater core or heater hoses. So we got a the Chevy is three quarter inch heater hose and then a five eighths hose. So I just got a reducer, you can see there. So it reduces from three quarter to five eighths because the Cummins heater lines are both five eighths. Um, I got the reducer is a Dorman reducer. You can just get it at AutoZone. It's right off the shelf and it is meant for this. So got that stuff knocked out of the way. This will be tidied up and kind of pushed Something along that orientation um, doesn't look too awful. Obviously, not the most ideal routing. Kind of looks half-assed, but there's really no other way to route this because of the exhaust. <clears throat> so, got that done. Filled it with coolant, and yeah, filled it with coolant, which we haven't started the truck yet because I was waiting on uh, what we were going to do with trans fluid. So I got. A flexible dipstick in here. This is from Jags. I won't tell you the part number yet because I want to make sure it works first. So the problem we were having with the old dipstick was that the I would fill the truck up, run it, get it up to operating temp, and then you'd go drive the truck around and be fine, everything. You'd park the truck, come back the next day, there'd be a puddle of trans fluid under it. My consensus is that the trans cooler is back filling down into the pan and then the pan's filling up and that fluid's going over this o-ring and it's leaking out of the dipstick tube. Um, this was sit pretty loosely in the trans uh, hole, like the dipstick hole. It's pretty loose in there. So uh, I ordered the shifter from Jags. Should be here tomorrow. Um, so we should be able to install the shifter, get this thing topped off with trans fluid. Hopefully if everything goes good with the dipstick, 
and everything goes good with the shifter and we should be able to test drive the truck. Um, the only other things we really got to do is tidy stuff up. I got to P-clamp some fuel lines, P-clamp the trans lines up and uh, just tidy, tidy things up. And then this thing can be like legitimately running and driving. We also need cooling fans and all that stuff is ordered as well. So today is a pretty rough one to me for me. I'm feeling it. I went to my niece's uh, birthday party at a trampoline park and I was showing off trying to jump super high and touch like the beams. Did something wrong, landed on my back on the middle section where they split the trampolines and it's just metal. Landed directly on my back, like knocked the wind out of myself. And I am feeling it today. I can hardly move. My back hurts really bad. I'm hoping I didn't hurt anything, uh, but I'm sure we'll be fine. And yeah, so as soon as we have the shifter and everything, you'll see me in the next clip. So all of our relays and stuff came in for e-fans the e-fans e should be here tomorrow um i have to order one more relay because i was thinking i could use the e-fan relays for the engine on the trans cooler as well but i forgot that it's ground triggered so there's no way to really separate the two so that they don't turn on at the same times so we used the fuel pump relay that i was going to use for the fuel pump we used it for our trans cooler fan so we got a, I ran all of the power wires as you can see. So we have, this is our trans cooler. So it comes up, this is a power block, a fused power block. Um, and then this is our E-fans for the actual engine. And you can see that comes up, feeds here as well. The nice thing about these is if these fuses blow, these LEDs will light up. So all I gotta do is pop the hood and glance at it and i'll know that it has a pop fuse which is nice if you don't have like a test light on the side of the road or something so we got that ran we got our power wire fished back there it's not permanently in we're still going to run this uh signal wire which is ground signal into the cab to a switch but i will turn the fan on so you can hear it the fan is pretty loud much louder than I thought it was going to be and it does put a decent bit of vibration into the truck I don't know if camera picks it up but you can kind of hear it so I'm hoping that when the truck's running you don't notice it but this thing moves some serious air one thing we can check off the list all right so the shifter did come in and i already installed it um i was learning as i was going so i didn't record it i didn't want to try and make it sound like i knew what i was talking about all right it's the next day we got the fans on they are uh 14 inch fans they are just tied through the radiator with the mounting hardware that comes with it I got a wire, comes over to the plug, and then the same here, comes over, ties into the relay turn on, so to go two to one, and then a ground goes straight to the terminal. So those are wired up. Clearances are good, it's definitely tight. Definitely gonna hate life if I have to change a water pump or anything on the side of the road. So that runs over, got the turn on wires, the, uh, they're ground signaled into here with a switch on each side. This is the cooling fan and this is the trans cooling fan. As you can see, they move quite a bit of air. Those are wired. And then we got the trans cooler wired. Also, finished up everything underneath the truck with the wiring 
and the lines. So we got um, trans cooler comes down, grounds here. This ground is clean, threaded bolt through the frame. Then we got trans cooler lines coming down. We got P clamped to the frame rail. They're not tight on the line, so like it still has, it can still move if it needs to, which is kind of how I want it. There's not enough slack in it for it to like move or fall down. Um, so then that trans line is also P clamped up here, which goes to the front. So fuel lines, double P clamped there. And then they also come down across the, there we go, across the trans cross member and then up to the metal fuel lines. So as you can see, it's routed pretty good. Um, and then this stuff we have to loom still, but it's all tied up and out of the way. And yeah, the transmission standalone wiring is zip tied up and good to go. So pretty much finished up under here. We already went for our first test drive. I didn't film it. We're going to go for another one in a second. Um, threw the mirrors on it. We did get an oil leak, as you can see. Uh, pretty sure it was the drain that I didn't tighten. The top clamp was completely loose. I'm hoping that's the case. And I'm really hoping it didn't get a hole poked in the uh, little boot between the oil drain and what goes into the block because it was hitting the motor mount just barely. Twisted that though, got that fixed. Um, everything else is seemed good. Um, just kind of did like a check over. So we'll go for a quick drive and try and film it. It's kind of hard by myself, but regardless, by the end of this video, we'll get a good driving clip in. It's definitely the steering is super sloppy. I think the Pitman arm, this guy right here, that ball joint I'm pretty sure has a ton of play in it. So I will probably try and buy one before we uh, actually use the truck because it's pretty bad. So um, brakes are amazing. Everything so far has been amazing and I love it. And I forgot how rowdy this thing is. Like, it is rowdy. I, I completely forgot how rowdy it was, but uh, I'm gonna quit talking and let's go drive this thing down the road real quick. Nothing crazy. I'll get somebody to film like an actual good clip. It's kind of loud in the cab because I haven't covered that hole up yet. And it's open down pipe.
how fast I'm going. But. Pull over and check some stuff. the tailgate lights to work too yeah it looks like they work not all of them but some of them gosh it's so sick it definitely rakes super bad and i hate it but it's because this wheel is like a 32 or this tire is a 32 and this is like a 30 but i ordered tires for it Hopefully they'll be here in a couple of days. Well, this, this is good. Uh, we got it at two and three. I can't really remember if, I can't remember if it, I think it revs out higher and it locks up a little earlier. We got this situation back here cleaned up. It looks so much better. I mean, the little red wire kind of bothers me, but that's much better than the big swooping. That just my OCD was driving me nuts there. But got the OE um, rubber grommet back in there too. I cut it off the big old harness. So got that, put it in there and it's nice and tight. So I shouldn't have to worry about any leaks getting in there. Uh, now we're gonna move on to taking care of this mess here. All right, so as usual, this video is all over the place. Um, sorry, it's been a month, a few weeks uh, since the last clip that I just filmed, which was us straightening up the wiring in the engine bay. For some reason, I didn't record anything after that. I'm not really sure why. I think it was because I was in a rush to get the truck done to uh, haul it to No Star Bash, or to use it to haul it in No Star Bash. So fast forward, We've already hauled the car to No Star Bash and back, and the truck's actually been sitting at my house with the whole interior ripped out of it um, because we're doing the headliner and I was upgrading the speakers in the dash. All this up here is ripped apart. Got the speakers out. Anyways, that's besides the point. I'm going to make a separate video on upgrading the sound system in this thing, but, um, I wanted to end this video off. I know it's all over the place. I'm going to make another video that's basically like my impressions on uh, the whole swap and basically how good of a truck it's been. Um, the haul there and back, the truck did amazing. The When I got home, it started running kind of rough. And come to find out on the way back from the event, the injection pump came loose and basically retarded the timing all the way and the truck felt really sluggish and like just didn't have any ass and it was running kind of hot and uh makes total sense so it retarded the timing all the way out the injection pump was actually starting to move around so at idle the pump would be doing this and the whole truck be loping real bad so i got that sorted out I'm gonna put some loctite on it um other than that the rear wheel cylinder blue not really a surprise there, so got to replace that. But other than that, truck's been great. Just got to do all the other stuff. Um, and yeah, so we're going to make a separate video 
on my impressions, probably driving it around some, um, probably make a video hauling with it. And uh, obviously the series isn't done just because the truck's running. It's far from being done. There's still tons of shit we're gonna do to this thing. And I'm gonna plan on just keep making videos on it. So I will see you guys in the next one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I don't know how good it is because there's so many different clips. I can't even keep track, but yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.